Hey, while you in the first five seconds of the video, go ahead, like and subscribe. His anger with for behold, the Lord will come with fire and with his chariots like a whirlwind to render his anger. To render what? His anger. No, to render his wrath. His anger. Guess what? The Lord is angry. He's angry what's going on in Lawndale. He's angry what's going on on the west side. He's angry with his people day in and day out. Killing each other. Selling drugs to each other. Not taking care of our families. He's angry with the pastors teaching lies to his people every Sunday. Here doing. We've been going over a few things. We've been letting you all know that the end time is coming. We are in the last days. And if you want to avoid that judgment, in the last days, we got to come back to what the Lord said. But the churches have failed us. Right. Your pastors have failed us. Right. Let's get off. Uh, let's get off 1 Corinthians 15 and 33. 1 Corinthians 15 and 33. Let's get that. Because we've been going to church, right? Matter of fact, some of us are going to go to church tomorrow, but we don't even still don't know what's going on. Christ warned about the wars that's coming. But he also said this is not the end yet. Before that end comes, we have to get our minds right. But it's one thing we must do first. You got it? And that, knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. It's high time. Meaning it's a priority that we got to wake up out of sleep. You said we got to repent. That's the number one topic we got to be talking about. Because we see the news. We see that the Lord is shifting things in the earth to prepare for his second coming. But now all of a sudden when it's time to talk about it, now you're God. You're not God. Right. You're going to die. Why? Because you still want to be asleep. And I say this to compel you all to wake up. It's time to wake up. Why is that? Read on. For now is our salvation nearer than when we believe. Our salvation is there. Because everybody want to know when is Christ coming back. Everybody want to know when is the end of the world. Even his disciples ask, when is your second coming? When will all these things take place? But before anything can take place, the first step is we must wake up. We must wake up. Wake up to what? Now we can go to 1 Corinthians 15 and 34, I believe. Now we can go back there. Now we can talk. Because you said we must repent. How do we repent? We gotta wake up. Wake up to what though, we? The book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 15, verse 34. Awake to righteousness. Awake to what? To righteousness. No, awake to smoking a blunt. To righteousness. Wake up and go to the liquor store. To righteousness. Come on. And sin not. And do what? And sin not. Come on. For some have not the knowledge of God. I speak this to your shame. Right, because a lot of us don't have the knowledge of God. A lot of us don't have the knowledge. Everyone thinks they know something. Everyone wants to pride themselves on knowing something. Because we've been reading the Bible for a few hours already. But you say you're good. Anytime you're good smoking a, a black and mouth, you're not good. You're going to die. First and foremost, that you are getting lung cancer. When last time you read the back of the black and mouth box? But you say you're good. 
How can you be good knowing that you're putting something in your body that's killing you, but you do it anyway? What sense does that make? My brother, would you jump off a bridge knowing it'll kill you? Would you put a gun to your head and blow your brains out? You might as well do that. It tells you on the back of the box, Surgeon General Warning, this thing could cause cancer. But you do it anyway, what'd you say? Christ is the king, you're right about that. And he's coming back again though. Christ came, he died three days and rose back up into heaven, but he's coming back again. But before that, you must wake up. He ain't came back, just look around. How did he come back if we still live in the hell? When he's coming back, we get to Isaiah uh, 60, uh, 60, uh, 66, 66. He's angry and jealousy. Let's get that. 15. 6, 6, and 15. Because Christ ain't came back yet because nothing's changed. Come on. The book of Isaiah, chapter 66, verse 15. For behold, the Lord will come with fire and with his chariots like a whirlwind. He said that the Lord will come back with fire. That's thermonuclear warfare. Have you ever seen the devastation of a nuclear bomb? It leaves nothing. So no, Christ has not came back yet. Talk about I think Christ came already. If he did, we all be dead by now. But before that day comes, we have to repent. Because some of y'all think that the Lord is coming with hugs and kisses. Some of you think that Jesus is coming to sing Kumbaya. You know why? Because you think first and foremost that Jesus is a white man. Right. With long stringy hair. That hugs little boys and pets puppies. But how's the Lord going to come back in these last days? Me? The Lord will come with fire and with his chariots like a whirlwind. And that's the result of sin right there. Doing something you have no business doing. You're not keeping the Sabbath day, by the way. And these are things that happen. Because you're in the midst of sin, judgment comes upon you. Why? Because you're doing things you have no business doing. But before the Lord comes back, you must repent. But let's find out how the Lord's coming back. Read. To render his anger with. For behold, the Lord will come with fire and with his chariots like a whirlwind to render his anger. To render what? His anger. No, to render his love. His anger. Guess what? The Lord is angry. He's angry with what's going on in Lawndale. He's angry with what's going on on the west side. He's angry with his people day in and day out. Killing each other. Selling drugs to each other. Not take care of our families. He's angered with the pastors teaching lies to his people every Sunday. He's angered with that thing. That's why he's got to come back with fire. He has to judge the whole earth again. The first time he did it, he did it with water. The second time he's going to do it, he's going to do it with fire. Right. You talking about water and fire, both are purifying agents. When you're dirty, you use water to cleanse yourself. When it comes to fire, to, uh, to purge out all the infirmities, you have to use heat and fire. That's what he's going to do. He's going to purify and purge this earth of his wickedness. He's going to do it with fire. Why? Because he's angry. We don't. And his rebuke with flames of fire. For by fire and by his sword will the Lord plead with all flesh. He's going to plead with all flesh. How? Do destruction. Hey, my brother, do you want to be saved in these last days? I'm talking to you, sir. You don't want to be saved? So you want to die there? You want to die? A foolish thing. A foolish thing. A foolish ass. You know what? Just like the Lord's angry, I'm angry. We're trying to save our people's lives, but our people don't care. Hold that, Ecclesiastes 8-11. Yeah. This is why our people don't care. This is why you can make a foolish statement like that. And you're supposed to be an example. 
Easy as these ain't left. This is why people make these statements. Ecclesiastes 8 11. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 8 and verse 11. Because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily, therefore the heart of the sons of men is fully set in them to do evil. So how come our people are still evil? How come we can have countless examples of judgments? How long have we been going through black on black crime? How long has there been a gang problem in the city of Chicago? How long has there been drugs in our communities? It's been drugs in our communities for so long, we know the results of drugs. Right. It's been drugs in our communities for so long, hell, we know a family member right now is strong out. Hey, my brother, the bus driver across the street, do you know anybody strong out on drugs? I don't blame you if you don't want to talk about it. But these are things we must talk about. We see these things, but yet there's no change. Yeah. Why? Because our people minds are set to do evil no matter how much of the consequences that we see day in and day out. We talking about Saturday right now. Between Saturday, now come Monday morning, it's going to be at least 11 murders in Chicago alone. Why? Because we are set to do evil. And I know you hear me. I know you're listening. You don't have to agree. You know why you ain't got to agree? Because God's word will stand. Right. Nation is family. Oh!